It's the penultimate stage at the 2017 Tour of Guangxi and the longest stage as well. 212.2 kilometers on tap for the riders with a pretty big climb coming at the end of this one today as the riders leave Luzhou to the northern city of Guilin. After three sprint stages and a big climbing day yesterday, today, uh, sort of a question mark whether or not a break is going to be able to go or if we'll see a selection at the finish or maybe another field sprint. Max Valscheid and his Sunweb cycling team certainly looking for a field sprint after missing out on a win the first three days to the Colombian Fernando Gaviria. They hope today they can get it right. I think maybe the mood Movie Star checking in as well after some solid fire. days Back in the breakaway the for the Spanish team. The Not a so great sprinter on that squad, so their hope would have to come either uh, separating on the climb or maybe getting themselves into the break of the day. Good spirits among the team, though. See some smiles on the sign in stage as uh, they said hello to the fans. In Lujo at the start this morning. Lotto Sudal with Tim Wellens, the new overall race leader, moving into the red jersey after his ride yesterday. So uh, they'll play some defense for the boys in red today as uh, the young Belgian looks to defend his overall race lead with just two days of racing to go today. Probably the last real opportunity to pick up GC time because it's relatively flat and short sprint stage tomorrow. There's the hero of the Tour of Guangxi, Wang Meiyin, the only Chinese rider competing in this World Tour race with his Bahrain Merida team as he checked in to the adoration of the local Lujo crowd. Main Wang has uh, really taken on the role of Chinese ambassador with his Bahrain Merida team, spending a lot of time with the press, a lot of time with the media, and a lot of time with the fans, always willing to lend an interview, stick around for a picture. He uh, truly has become a great rider and a great athlete as well. Great ambassador for the sport. The rest of the riders checking in. Bora Hansgrohe saying hello. As uh, they learned a little Chinese this morning on the sign-in stage, learning how to introduce themselves to the local fans. Part of the uh, exchange of culture here and enjoying some local instruments as well for the Bora Hansgrohe boys. Not all fun and games today, uh, maybe a relaxed morning, but they had to get to work pretty quickly. There's the Quick Step Floors team with a three-time stage winner, Fernando Gaviria, also wearing the blue jersey as the leader of the points competition. And then the young Frenchman, Julian Alaphilippe, in the white jersey as the best young rider, the top rider in the general classification under 25 years old. Alaphilippe, fourth place yesterday on the big climbing day with a, a pretty rough three-kilometer climb to the finish. So we'll see if he's got more climbing legs today for stage five. As we said, just over 212 kilometers total. Uh, it starts with an intermediate sprint, 29K into the stage. There's another one at 118. Then they hit a few KOMs, starting at 154K, 171K, and then 178K before eventually heading to the finish over that big climb. There's about uh, 10 kilometers after the final summit. It comes downhill and then flattens out to the finish. Neutral rollout from Liu Zhou. Make sure everyone got out of town safely behind the race director's car, led, of course, by the red jersey of Tim Bellens, looking nice and relaxed in his Lotto Sudal kit with the red overall race leader's jersey. Now, typically, we've been seeing the breakaways form uh, really early on the stages, but today it sort of took a while before the breaks went, but certainly not for a lack of trying. Very aggressive riding. The riders knew that those climbs could really uh, make or break a breakaway. Certainly, uh, with enough time over that last climb, it was definitely possible for a breakaway to survive to the line. So a lot of riders looking to get their stage win out of a breakaway, knowing that if it stayed together, it would be tough to beat riders like Fernando Gaviria, Max Valscheid, and uh, Dylan Kronewegen. So there you go. As they hit 0K, the attack star, Nipo Bini Pantini, Sunweb, Cannondale Draypack, all trying to get into the mix. And 
That is Kohei Oichimi, who uh, came in second to last yesterday after staying back to help one of his injured teammates make it to the finish. As uh, we saw Kasushige Koboki actually end up in a ditch. He was a uh, did not start this morning, but he did finish the stage yesterday. Then BMC gave it a go. They've been really aggressive this week as well. We saw Daniel Oss in the breakaway yesterday. Sylvain Dillier running in the breaks before that. So uh, BMC clearly trying to get some space off the front again today. But unfortunately found themselves in a tough position solo off the front. So they would uh, definitely need some more help if that breakaway was going to make it. You can see the Peloton strung out single file here, not taking any move lightly. It was uh, at least 30K into the stage before we saw the uh, eventual break of the day form. As I said before, not for a lack of trying. We saw a ton of moves going off the front, but it seems like almost as soon as they would go, everyone else would find the legs to respond. Like Joey Roscoff, the American on the BMC squad, giving it a go before eventually uh, pulling the plug, seeing a big chase group coming behind him. A little bit of a technical section here. They came back just looking for the points. And uh, I don't know if many guys really contested that. Then we saw this move coming to the KOM. That's Daniel Oss going on the attack. The uh, Cajo Rawwater with him is Fabrizio Ferrari in the green jersey. And Cannondale Draypack trying to respond as well with William Clark. Yumbo NL keeping an eye on the front. They're going to be riding for Dylan Groenewegen today, who has been knocking on the door of a sprint win, but just hasn't figured out quite how to beat Fernando Gaviria. Pretty straightforward run into the finish today. If the group is all together, it's uh, almost entirely straight and flat inside the last two kilometers. But the big story is going to be the wind. It was a block headwind at the finish for the riders. So uh, that would make things tough in terms of trying to time the sprint. Back onto the second climb of the day. Movistar took over on the front, bringing a climbing heavy squad for sure. So they were looking to make things as difficult as possible today for uh, this peloton and use this course to their advantage. You can see tough for them to get away and uh, the breakaway still away at this point. The gap had gone up to right around two minutes here as these guys got back to work. Again, looking at uh, Fabrizio Ferrari on the front. Will Clark, second wheel, and Daniel Loss. You can see racing your three riders in the breakaway. Loss also spent uh, yesterday in the breakaway and earned... Uh, the most active rider award at the Tour of Guangxi. So maybe looking for another one of those today out of the breakaway. See some narrow roads, fast roads. It was a, a fun run in for the riders. 
absolutely beautiful uh, course today as the guys back in the peloton tried to stay cool, tried to stay hydrated, and tried to stay fed as well. It's Ricardo Stacchiotti for the Bovini Pantini team. Grabbing some refreshments, nice cold coke to take back up to the guys in the peloton. Back with the breakaway, gap went up uh, even more, three and a half minutes at this point as they continue to tap out the tempo, trading poles on the front. Breakaway certainly working well together, and uh, Daniel Loss was clearly the most motivated for the KOM points with uh, a chance to move into the green jersey today. If he was able to sweep all the points up, that would be enough in this breakaway to... Uh, move him into green so he did pick up the second KOM of the day with Clark second and then Fabrizio Ferrari third over that climb Boss looking to take the jersey from his teammate Nicholas Roach who uh, earned it yesterday the Irish rider for BMC and uh, he actually took it from his Swiss teammate Sylvain Dillier so BMC just passing that green KOM jersey around all week this week Today, they hoped it would end up on the back of Daniel Oss. Felt I'm not real worried about uh, those guys a little over halfway through the stage, and there wasn't a whole lot of panic at the front. Kept the gap under four minutes as the sprinters' teams would go to the front to try to uh, keep this one within striking distance for their guys at the finish. Meanwhile, back on to the third climb, or approaching the third KOM of the day, I should say. And things started to fall apart just a little bit with uh, Ferrari going to the front, Daniel Loss sitting second. Will, you see they start looking around, waiting to see if Will Clark is going to try and come around on the attack. But Daniel Loss, no problem. Rolls around Ferrari, and uh, you can see none of the riders really contesting. They knew that they didn't have a chance for the green jersey, so they were happy to let Daniel Loss take the points and just keep working. They had a bigger fish to fry trying to win the stage on stage five. There's the top three on the third and final KOM of the day, or sorry, third of four KOMs of the day, so still one to come here. First KOM in Category 3, second one a Category 3 as well. The one they just hit was a Category 2, and then the final climb of the day, the big Category 1 for the uh, last KOM here. On to the descent, Daniel Loss bombing down as uh, the Italian showed off his descending skills. Doing a nice job keeping things fast on the way down as the gap sort of yo-yoed back and forth. It was tough to get an accurate time gap because of the topography of the course today. A lot of ups and downs out there. There weren't uh, a whole lot of flat sections in the final 50K. Stage five, the only stage going over 200 meters or uh, 200 kilometers relatively short stages the other days so today uh, what most riders were considering a clean stage then Movistar back onto the front as they started uh, the next KOM this should be the final KOM the fourth KOM of the day the big category one climb you see the guys tightening up the shoes zipping up the jerseys getting ready for the last major climb of the 2017 Tour of Guangxi, the last major climb of the 2017 World Tour calendar. So they did have some company on this climb, some riders able to come out of the peloton to join them. And you can see the green jersey tacked onto the very back of Nicholas Roach into the KOM lead yesterday, but Daniel Laws continued to press on, 
Rocha did not obviously did not challenge his teammate, so he was happy to let Daniel Loss try to pick up as many points as he could on the way up. So it looked like there might be a selection at this point, like uh, they might have a shot at trying to get away. With Sky, Lotto Sudal, Trek Segafredo, Movistar, and of course BMC in the conversation, but really not much time off the front. The Peloton really did a nice job of keeping these guys in sight and keeping the race as close together as they could despite Sky's best efforts. Haven't uh, really had a result this week quite yet for the British squad. So over that fourth KOM, uh, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Roach actually did go over the top of Daniel Loss. But it was win-win for BMC one way or another. They uh, had that green jersey locked up. So it went Roach, Loss, and then Tim Wellens uh, in the red jersey and followed those moves to make sure that he could defend his GC lead. So that caused a selection of about 15 riders in this group. See Julian Alaphilippe there as well in the white jersey, taking a look back, trying to get a better idea of just how big that gap is. Sky continuing to push on the front, really not letting up on this one, setting a brutal pace and forcing the selection here. But uh, surprisingly, just one rider. I believe that is Landa. Poles, maybe. We'll check the uh, confirmation of the Sky Rider. But after they came off of that final plan, not much racing to go on the way down after that final KOM. Only about uh, 20K at this point. the major team starting lining up after catching the remnants of that breakaway, the remnants of that selection. Did see a small attack from uh, Sylvain Dillier, the BMC rider, in the white Swiss national champions jersey. Barre Marina marking the move, Canadale Draypack there as well. Just wasn't enough for those guys to get away. Really aggressive riding from BMC today. They were really uh, big animators out there on the road. And you can see that put the Peloton on notice. Strung out single file front to back on the run. And this is about 10K to go as uh, they hit the gas on the front. Trying to make this race fast, keep it together, and turn it over to the sprinters inside the last few kilometers. Step floors look perfectly positioned surrounding Fernando Gaviria. And Otto Yumbo also did a lot of work in the front of Peloton today. We didn't show much of it here, but we saw a lot of those yellow and black jerseys driving the pace, chasing the breakaway. stage wins the white jersey and the blue jersey going into the penultimate stage there you see a couple of the lotto yumbo riders second and third wheel and of course lotto sudal riding the front uh, for tim Bellens. surprisingly daniel Loss still finding the energy to ride uh, near the front here in the closing kilometers after spending the day in the breakaway attacking on some of the climbs riding on the front Somehow still found the Watts to ride in the top five inside six kilometers to go here. So Ellen's just trying to stay out of trouble. Just trying to get inside that final 3K marker to uh, make sure that he can defend his red jersey coming into the day tomorrow. For the final day of racing, so... It was pretty clear at this point that it would be another field sprint. The fourth sprint of the week here at the Tour of Guangxi. And the big question was, can anyone upset Fernando Gaviria, the winner of the first three? 
There are a lot of hungry riders. Traveled a long way, halfway around the world, and uh, they wanted to make sure that they didn't walk away empty-handed. A lot of Sudal did a lot of pulling, even into the final few kilometers. Uh, they put their guys on the front, including Tim Bellens, I think just trying to stay out of trouble. There was a big crash yesterday with about eight kilometers to go as uh, they approach the final climb. So maybe the guy's a little nervous in the peloton today. Want to make sure that they keep Tim Bellens at the front. Obviously, the further forward you are, the safer you are. Same story again here. Lotto Yumbo, quick step. Lotto Sudal. And then uh, a mix of riders behind them. Not really well organized. BMC was up there. You see the green jersey of uh, Nicholas Roach. And Sky also lining up their full train. Trying to make something happen. They couldn't really do it on the climb. Couldn't split the group. So they were very quickly running out of options to try to animate this race today. Trek Segafredo moving up as well. They were riding for uh, Balcomolema yesterday in the GC, but those hopes uh, kind of dashed in that crash. A few of their guys caught up in the scuffle on the approach to the summit yesterday. Big effort from these guys on the front. Impressive at the end of the year as well. you got to remember, these guys have had a long season for most of these riders. This will be the final race of the year on a World Tour race on the calendar. And uh, it's tough to find that motivation with just two stages of racing to go in your season. But these guys at the front had no problem finding the Watts today. See things start to get cold. And Dylan Gronewegen picks up a win for Lotto Yumbo. A big win for those guys after uh, getting skunked on the first three stages. Gronewegen finally comes through for the Dutch squad. Handshakes all around. You can see the media surrounding him. I think happy to have a new winner at the Tour of Guangxi, a new face on the podium. Gronovic in the uh, former wear of the white jersey, the best young rider competition, but after the big climb on stage four yesterday, he lost that to Julian Alaphilippe. Uh, obviously, the sprinter not expected to climb, so uh, you can see from the shot up above as we go back to the replay, it really all came down to timing for Gronovic. <laughs> Of Juhai Green Electric Company Limited to present the flowers and souvenirs. Flowers and souvenirs. Flowers and souvenirs. 
李明集团专业运动装备事业部公司总经理李壮先生为他颁奖。So that's it for stage five. One more day to go here at the 2017 Tour of Guangxi as we look to see if Tim Wellens can hold on to the red jersey and if we'll have another sprint winner tomorrow. We'll see you for stage six from the 2017 Tour of Guangxi.